गुड आफ्टरनून राजीव जी हाउ आर यू आई एम गुड सर हाउ यू सर अब आई एम ग्रेट सो आई एम सो ग्लैड टू हैव यू आई एम रियली ग्रेटफुल टू यू फॉर योर टाइम एंड आई एम रियली एक्साइटेड टू टू सी योर पिक्चर्स ऑल द टाइम ऑफ स्पिति एंड यू आर गोइंग देयर एंड देयर आर सो मेनी थिंग्स अबाउट यू आई मीन आई मीन आई प्रोबेबली दिस सेशन विल बी लेस टू टॉक अबाउट ऑल द थिंग्स दैट यू हैव डन सो अपार्ट फ्रॉम जस्ट बीइंग अ गुड फोटोग्राफर यू आर अ ट्रू एक्सप्लोरर एंड स्पेशली इन द विलेजेस ऑफ स्पिति एंड and not just exploring giving back to the community so that is also something which uh, you have uh, done quite a lot and maybe you can talk about it and and again yeah. uh, you uh, you also have uh, done lot of social work uh, in the villages and apart from that you uh, also are a electronics uh, engineer you you, you <laughs> have invented so many products i keep seeing uh, some uh humidity control or whatever i mean you you make so many things <laughs> yes. there's so much to talk about you so i'm really excited to uh, to start this session so uh, welcome i welcome all all of you to this session and uh, let's have this session so it is not just about photography it's uh, you know rajiv ji is a great personality in his, uh, in himself so let us uh, uh, welcome him and thank once again for joining us rajiv ji so uh, please tell me a little bit about your journey as a photographer Okay first of all I'm um, Sarath thank you very much for inviting me for these sessions I saw the channel recently I was going through it it's a fantastic idea fabulous idea wonderful photographers you have invited some great you know people I I uh, you know fortunately I knew some of them and I was like hooked to watching all through it I just went through it all so yes first of all I really you know uh, thank you for starting all this initiative it's a great wonderful idea okay um regarding my photography to be very honest i'm not a I, i haven't taken a you know formal education in a photography uh my my love for photography started from travel so um i i will be honest with you when i was kid and then when i was in college i think i traveled the least i think the farthest i traveled in my college time in my study time was from delhi to probably chandigarh that was the farthest i travel okay okay <laughs> then we we got into job and you know how it works in you know in job you you get right. you you get sucks into it it takes you over and then you are all sitting in 9 to 6 gets you know becomes 8 to 12 and 8 to 12 becomes 24 right. that frame you know takes you over and your life is gone um i think probably i would say sometime in 2005 uh, and i i would say my, the job you know took my passion somehow to a next level because i was into a job which was an it job um, and uh, thankfully the job allowed me to travel to almost you know 80% of the world so i traveled to all the places but at that time it, the photography part was zero so when i came back to india and i saw a lot of mountain part of it i traveled a lot so i traveled a lot of ladakh even before i had a camera with me so i remember when i first traveled to ladakh i had no camera so there was absolutely no camera and i was in ladakh and i was just you know walking around into places i was into you know pangso lake and i was like not taking a single picture when i came back and i saw a lot of people you know i i i think i it was kind of an inspiration for some of the guys who were traveling and taking some lovely pictures from traveling part you know this photography part started and then i i remember i hired not really hired i loaned a small camera it was a film camera nikon ka film camera tha and it was just a body right so i got a body from a friend i got a roll film roll it was a i think i iso 400 roll at that time it was a gold level roll from uh, from konica okay. and i got a lens uh, i think it was 2000 Three or two thousand four. Okay. Sometime two thousand three is is when I got this body, and I was still struggling to find a lens. Then I arranged a lens from. It was a Leica pure metal uh, lens. It was I think twenty twenty six mm or twenty seven mm lens, pure Leica gold lens. I don't remember the focal length exactly. It was a prime lens. I used it for some time, and it just took me over. It was like amazing experience. I was traveling. I was not capturing it. so then um, i think from there it all the love for the photography started and and here i am i there is no stopping i'm i mean i have I've tried to capture a lot of pictures of landscape that's what where that's where my interest is i won't say my forte i'm not an expert on it to be very honest with you sarav i i just click pictures as i go 
i am not really very good at you know you know setting up a light it's not my forte i can't if you ask me can you set up a light for me with a ln chrome in the backdrop and a you know a soft light on up i think i'll fail but if you tell me can you sit in a mountain for let's say 10 hours and wait for that ambient light yes i can do that i've done that a lot i know i i've, I've sat on a place in spiti for two days just because there was a yak sitting there and i wanted the ambient light to fall on it and i just waited for it so i can do that for you but yeah i think that's where i my love is i just pick up a camera i just pick up my car i just drive to mountain i haven't really learned photography as a like education yes i do follow a lot of photographer i've taken one formal session with kind of my guru rathika uh, i don't know if you know rathika Ratika is a very famous wildlife photographer. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. He is kind of a guru for me. He is my inspiration. He is a fantastic wildlife photographer. Mm -hmm. So I I remember I think 2007 or 2008 is when she announced one of her first few you know short sessions, two day sessions, and she was in Delhi and I just saw it and I literally pounced on it. I said I'm going to join first session formally. and in those two days we were doing the session in the the delhi zoo and uh, i learned a lot of stuff from from her and that's the only formal session i had um i i think um, i think the the way you can learn more is the more you start taking pictures Absolutely. that's what everybody told me that's what my gurus told me i have a lot of like rudra sen i told you rudra is one guy who is a master of black and white i think as i was telling you i can't even think of you know coming close to him on capturing the landscape the shades or the shades of you know gray to white to black so but yes i think these are some of the people who inspired me a lot i still you know keep picking inspiration from them that's my journey as of now as of now i think i'm more focused on um clicking the candid pictures of mountains people villages while you know lifestyle right. spiti started i think so mountain was you know with me all the time but yes spiti has got a great me and spiti has got a great connection um i do a lot i did a lot of stuff in spiti i've stopped doing some and i'm doing a lot i don't know if that's a matter of talk here or not probably if you want i can talk on that but yeah that's my brief journey on photography great. um yeah great so i think uh, i can't wait to go through your pictures and then we'll talk about them and in between uh, i'll ask you to uh, share your stories from spiti sure. okay so sure, so, so let me say, share my screen so sure. you should be able to see my pictures so maybe we'll start with with this one and uh, and before uh, i start i, I think uh, i remember uh, uh so the the place where we stay i think you also stay at the same place with jamaica and he was telling about yes. how the whole night you were spending <laughs> in chandratal uh, getting <laughs> some shots so how crazy exactly. uh, first can be in the uh, freezing cold yeah so exactly yeah. but this this is this is not really chandratal by the way this okay, is yeah, uh, yeah. this is uh, this picture is from a place called dhankar hmm. dhankar monastery right and right. this was sometime midnight 2 o'clock Three o'clock, two o'clock, uh, no moon time. So at that time, I used to have a gypsy, and I used to have a bed in it. So I used to just drive down a place which is like quite suitable. And then, as I told you, I think the light on me is not very good because I'm not good at creating the light artificially. But otherwise, I think uh, this fantastic location, beautiful place, the mountains, amazing, the sky. like in any other mountain is absolutely clear um uh i would say a standard milky way shot but the pace and the ambient and the environment made it so beautiful right right so beautiful picture okay um pretty very picture of one of my most favorite place in tens This is a place called uh, Dud Patra in um, Kashmir. So, for those of you who you know, I know some you travel a lot, so you know this in and out. For for all the viewers who are there, um, Kashmir. I think a lot of people know Kashmir 
by just Gulmar, Unmar, or Pahalgaon. That's not Kashmir is. Kashmir is much more than these three places. Um, and yeah, and then this is uh, one of the those hidden gems of Kashmir. Yusma Dutpatri. Uh, this was basically not a photography drive. This was a family drive, and I saw this puddle in the high and the clouds and the, so basically it was the layers were just you know nicely placed one above each other so there was a puddle which is heart shape and there was a cow the reflection was coming out quite nicely in the grass and tree and then so i love the composition i love setup because it was so nicely layered one uh, one and another uh, and then yeah i think the light was so soft i loved it because the clouds uh because of the cloud and the sun and some of the sky was you know peeping out of it everything was so fantastic uh, perf- you know perfect setup for a soft light for a photographer as i say so what kind of gear do you use rajiv ji i as of now i'm using nikon um, d800 okay. and d810 okay. um these are my two most favorite Uh, bodies and I have three three lenses which I keep using. Uh, my most favorite is nately the I I am a I'm a fan of wide angle or ultra wide angle. Okay. So <coughs> I use quite a lot of Nikon for into you know twenty four f two point eight. Okay. That's my that's my most favorite lens. Um, a lot of people you know criticize me that I always click. I end up getting eight percent of my share from that lens. I should you know. Start using a prime lens, 50 mm, 7200. But I feel wide angle is a very changing lens. You, if you don't fill the negative areas properly, your picture or your image will have a lot of you know negative areas where you have nothing of interest. So I challenging lens. Uh, but then my biggest interest in wide angle is I can show a wider picture of because in a landscape it's important you know. show the audience uh, along with your key subject where exactly that key subject it is what all is you know surrounding that subject that's important in landscape as per as per i my understanding so i use 1424 quite a lot 2470 is another lens I don't you use much now i was doing a, uh, some of you know portraits and wedding photography sometime back i have stopped doing that i think i'll realize Not my cup of tea. I tried okay. all genre of photography, and I realized okay, I think okay. <laughs> I'll be happy and content if I am doing the landscape photography Great. or night photography. So that's one. The other lens which I use quite a lot is seventy two hundred f point eight. It's a gem of a lens, mm-hmm. and I have a eye from uh, I guess Samyang. Uh, it's a fourteen mm diagonal fish eye. Mm-hmm. That's another. Lens. So these are the three key lenses which I use quite a lot. Out of which I use fourteen to twenty four. uh most of the time okay yeah i can see in your pictures yeah, yeah you, can... you can see that yeah. okay so this from the shanti stupa okay that's another one of my most favorite place yeah <coughs> absolutely you know it better it's a shanti stupa evening time sun right you know, it's so beautiful and i guess it was it rained a bit generally you don't see too much of rain in ladakh because of the uh, you know it's had is higher than the range but generally it rains a bit little bit eh? the sky is so beautiful you know orange tint is what you get and this whole and then you can see the you know the 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 mountain peaks so beautifully stock kangri is nicely visible and then the lights of city is a beautiful city um you can actually and i've clicked so many pictures from the same spot in winter summer you know in morning in the evening time every time when you stand here you just you just feel as if you are clicking a new picture at all so this, yeah it's a beautiful uh, the place uh, anyway is beautiful um this right. was i think on ipod because i was doing a long exposure so the light uh, was quite less but then long exposure you know helped right. a lot right so apart from this touristy location i think you have ventured quite a lot into the the areas which were a little forbidden for other people or people have not been to places like demchok where uh, you know not many souls around so yeah. reading, reading about your story where uh, you you wanted to go there but you were not getting permissions and then you 
you sat there for some time and then you talked to an officer and you told him about your history and then finally he allowed you absolutely to yeah so please tell us a little bit about that was uh, an amazing so i yeah it was amazing experience yeah you want me to talk about that yes yes please tell us about the story <laughs> okay so of course luck is uh, ladakh or zanskar or nearby regions kashmir is definitely of my most favorite places for photography generally i prefer to go away far away from the you know touristy area while when this picture was clicked it was not really touristy nowadays is touristy i yeah, of course um, i won't I, i won't regret calling it touristy it deserves its own attention but yes ladakh has go, got you know a lot of places are still hidden um and uh since last couple of years i have you know preferred to you know visit ladakh in winter because that's when it's most challenging to you know do some photography videography you have two fights to you know take care of together one it's cold generally it gets minus 25 degree easily nights might go down uh, you know lower and then you have an altitude to fight against <coughs> and then uh, i remember few years back i was trying to you know for those of you who has uh, you know a little bit of ladakh uh, it's kind of a circle and i prefer to go to places which is close to uh, border area because those areas are very beautiful untouched and the region of chusul manmirak uh, loma hanle this whole belt which runs right across the indus river and then uh the the most talked about fingers these days they though all those areas are very beautiful uh, and then i remember a few years back as you read in my story i was trying to go to uh, a place called gala and we got stuck in a snow storm it was a very snow storm so we came back and uh, we got stuck in a place called loma and i was trying to contemplate exactly should i do because i have two days in my hand and winter is a time when you want to lose a time you want to capture a lot of the content <coughs> all the content so we thought probably i would try to go to demchak demchak is a border uh, i think even when i tried it the most difficult place to reach now in current condition it was i i feel it will be impossible to there so we somehow and a song story attend that sort of so i i will not create the whole story but yes damsak is a play where i managed to reach there of course i caught click too many pictures it's a sensitive area uh, i clicked few but i i haven't really posted it in a in a public forum but yes i think for those of you who still want to those who who, are, who love the landscape photography or a mountain photography ladakh is still one place you will have to spend i think many years to even care 1% of it so i would not call ladakh tourist yet probably some of the places is still touristy but i think lot of ladakh is is still you know completely you know untouched beautiful Absolutely. so yeah yes this one this is one place i think this is this picture i clicked i remember that the year probably 3 4 years back this is not the winter because uh, yeah, this is not a winter so much so i'll check when i clicked because i clicked so many pictures, similar pictures in many years but yeah i think even lay city itself have a lot of opportunities to click some beautiful pictures absolutely absolutely great Ah, fantastic! This is this picture clicked <laughs> out of nowhere, actually. So uh, this is uh, um, this is a place uh, just before Disket, Nubra Valley, as it is known uh, more, you know, with the people. And uh, I have a I have a friend who runs a small guest house um, just before Disket, and I was trying to visit him. this was i think 2018 and i was driving with couple of friends and generally i prefer to drive my own vehicle my vehicle is like a small studio and a car van and everything in it <coughs> so i don't mind even sleeping inside the car because i have built it like that and i was going there and i saw a puddle uh, from you know main road 
uh, from the main road which connects the um, the you know village hundunda uh, to district main village and i saw this puddle i realized i think could be a good you know opportunity to click the reflections and then everything so this is what it is it's all about uh, just find the opportunity get a good light the ambience and then you just do the justice to everything by your you know photography so right. that's what all all i did i just saw the opportunity i saw the landscape saw the puddle everything was there it's just that i i thought i will do a little attempt further to you know capture it into and this is what i live a lot like uh, to capture the reflections quite a lot and then just put some small you know out of the space subject that was my subject i wished i had some people you know jumping on or something else or an animal a horse in it but then i prefer to bring in a third party into it to just you know add a you know kind of a <coughs> different flavor to a standard reflection shot so Definitely. i thought i'll add a car into it absolutely it makes it look so much more uh, interesting right? yeah it yeah. the other thing it adds it it gives the relief the size okay absolutely. there is no so just in case if there is no vehicle in the picture you won't realize how big the mountains are so for me it's more like giving a scale if i add um, non living uh, artificial object into it all of a sudden the mountains the clouds and all that start looking gigantic in the side if you can see now you can feel the mountains are so big and we are just so small in front of it absolutely absolutely yeah i think this was from the yeah. same this was a very nice place um this is a place just before uh a uh, check post is called loma check post mm -hmm. and uh, we had to cross a water body it was a very long water body and we were contemplating the route what route we should take because there was no road and then as i was just you know waiting there so i was trying to make a path or what part it was, it was just water body nothing else and then we saw this puddle and these puddles are beautiful i mean my next attempt is uh, as and when i am i'm free to the mountains is to camp around all these puddles <clears throat> and you know click the you know stars and night up here around it i haven't i've done it couple of times like i've did in chandratal i've done it in some of the pin valley uh, puddles but uh, i think these puddles are quite nice if you just can you know sleep um, in the night and start doing some night photography so that's my next target so, you know start stop you know staying in the hotels and guest houses in the night and start sleeping around these puddles and do some great. night photography or maybe i can rise photography great great i would love to join you for those trips any time sir any time <laughs> wow where is this oh that's my home actually <laughs> this is actually uh, for for the audience this is a this is spiti this is my my soul half of my soul stays with my family and half of my soul stays in spiti uh, this was 2019 winter and by the way sarab you know i spent a lot of winter time in spiti um, yeah. and, and i did a lot of you know tourism work in spiti as well like yeah sorry you were so, saying something yeah so when you say your uh, guys when you when you see how passionately he is saying his half his soul is in spiti so you can imagine how much he has love for that place yeah please continue rajiv ji Thanks, thanks. Okay, so this was uh, near a village. Uh, I I think it was near a village called Pangmo. Uh, we call it Pangmo Ground. So it's actually a huge ground, and as as the snow starts falling, this ground becomes complete. Anyway, the whole city becomes completely white and beautiful. <coughs> But this ground itself becomes completely white. So yeah, this it's very difficult to reach at times when there is a lot of snow. Um, but then yeah this is this is a beautiful place and and it's actually very difficult when it's all white it's very difficult to add some contrast into it definitely sky gives you a blue contrast but that's all so all you have is a white and little bit of brown and blue and then you start adding some i would not call it an unnatural object or unnatural colors but then definitely any human or life 
as an as an when you adds into your frame immediately raises the value of the picture <coughs> so this he was one of my he i thought i'll i i'll add him and then again i realized there is something missing the backdrop so i have a star kind of a sun that's my favorite of capturing sun and then till the frame shift the frame bit so that in front of mine who that time capturing my car so then i had a level of layers where the audience can you know move their eyes from the first guy who was standing right in front of it and then they their eyes moves into the car and then their eyes move into the mountains and to the sun so kind of a flow that's my i don't know i so very honest i don't know a technical term to it but that's my way of to ensure that the person who is watching the picture gets engaged into it go to the end of it right right amazing absolutely amazing and uh, so we have a few questions so guys uh, thank you Please. so much for joining us this evening and uh, yeah if you have any questions that you uh, want to ask to rajiv ji uh, he'll be kind enough to answer our question so we'll continue with his pictures and i have a few questions i'm really eager to talk to him so we'll do it for some time and and then we'll definitely take the question and if you want to follow him he has done phenomenal work uh, in uh, in spiti so you can just go through his pictures you must see his youtube channel so i have put the li link in the description so all his coordinates is facebook instagram and in, uh, youtube id is there in the in the youtube description so after the video you must check it follow him and yeah he organizes a lot of trips to tours to these places so yeah you might contact him for these tours and apart from that i know he has worked with the local uh, villagers also uh, to provide uh, home stays instead of going to hotels you can stay in the home stays where you know get a you get a very local kind of experience maybe i'll request him to speak little bit about uh, that as well so yeah so uh, yeah let us continue and before that uh, if i'll be uh, grateful if you if you subscribe for the channel because we'll be continue to having this kind of uh, content here so there is a red button that you can see so you might like to subscribe if you want to have uh, similar content right so so let us continue rajiv ji so we'll we'll uh, see the the next picture wow so this is one picture i think uh, which uh, summarizes of what you are so that's why i have put this picture as a, as a <laughs> absolutely so please tell us a little bit about this experience yeah. Okay, so I'll give you a little bit of a discussion about where exactly this is. This is my home in uh, Spiti. This is Pali. Uh, the the building that you see at the back, uh, one of my good friend who is a local there, and I we together run this small property. It's a it's a very basic small property uh, that we rear. Um, and this was I think 2019. Uh, yeah, 2019 winter. While <clears throat> the whole view looks so beautiful the story behind it is very very you know dangerous i was stuck there almost like 3 weeks um generally before to the 18 spiti was not getting too much of a snow so the trend was even if it snows the max you will get stuck is like a day two day max three day right so our mindset was being like that we were not scared of snow anymore we were not we were not scared of the landslide launches anymore and then you know nature you can't challenge nature nature has its own path and 2019 it definitely took its own path and it decided you know <laughs> that enough is enough um it was january 2019 uh, when i was so we had some guest and then the guest left safely everything was fine and i was staying because i was trying to capture some snow leopards that spotted at that time in pin valley as of now mostly the snow leopards are captured in kir but then locals reported some you know they spotted a leopard so i just waited there for a day and in the night we were just enjoying some nice momos and you know uh, um, some local food so it's snowing snow is fine we thought we have seen everything we just you know we are master of nature and then nature tells boss you are not the master we are the master and it snowed it snowed so much i Just by morning we had almost eight snow, and it continued for two days, and then it continued for almost six days. Snowed. I haven't seen that much snow in my. I think even locals were saying that they never saw this much. Snow and I was stuck. So if you can see that this bumper was you know completely under. So this was something after I cleared the whole snow and everything, and I was stuck there for almost three weeks. But I'll be honest with you, Sarav. 
those three weeks were my most beautiful times in the mountains because i got the opportunity to join the, the villagers in their happiness in their sadness so we saw beautiful festivals we saw beautiful you know marriages happening during that time we saw unfortunately saw a couple of deaths because of different reasons but i think why i you feel privileged was i got involved there was nothing to do a camera walking in the village get into anybody's house they would be gladly accept you inside their home offering you food so all we were was doing was walking clicking pictures going into anybody's home drinking tea because walking was the only option and of course this is a place where i generally park my car and i just went out one morning and i saw nice sun was out and I, okay let's take a picture good moment um many other pictures uh, i think uh, the the only challenge in winter is just get so cold i remember i have captured my uh, temperature sensor this was roughly around minus 28 minus 29 that day that morning was approximate minus 29 degrees celsius wow minus 29 in the morning so night must be around <coughs> 40 easily years. easily this year 2019 uh, turn 20 uh, winter we saw minus 32 wow wow okay so please tell us a little bit about the the other activities that you have been doing in the spiti valley so helping the locals so uh, i know you have a friend who is a doctor so you go there and then do a lot of stuff there by the way uh, to be very happy with you that doctor is i now watch us this uh, narayan narima vina is a wonderful guy he is a test he is from bombay he is so i very much i am not doing anything specific or anything anything social work with the all i am is i have great friends, you know my circle who are like uh, some blessing for the empty they and they love they have a similar passion like me they love mountains the photography and uh, the dogs by profession uh, and i thought this idea of why don't we do some work in the local field because while the government and administration is doing a work on medic <laughs> but considering how remote or how extreme the place is if we can do you know some work on uh, on the local side probably uh, we can you can help so all i am doing is i am connecting my friends who are into medical field and are doing a lot of med camps um, spiti so we did camp on you know i i like we did camps on dental did camps on um, uh, scams on the you know child uh, needs then there was a friend did it for gynecology the mill uh, so there are a lot of things that is needed Uh, as of now, and just can't you know blame administration or government. They are not doing. They are doing their stuff. But I think we have a lot of people who can help. And I by the U S channel or through U V A, if there is anything, any medical you know, practitioner who love mountains, they are more welcome. They have a small property, very basic property. Be my guest. Come here, help people and. i i can assure you and i can guarantee you you will have the maximum level of satisfaction when you will see lovely happy faces getting the treatment done and going out here that's the this thing so i'm not really doing too much of a charity work out here there there is no you know charity organization nothing absolutely nothing all i am doing is i'm meeting some friends with the locals and that's my part and i'm out of it and and that's very appreciable because uh, most people they go they travel there and then they come back so and because you are so attached to spiti you, you are you are able to do so many things you are being a at least being a speci- uh, facilitator uh, itself is a is a great great thing yeah i think i think that's all need not just me i think any who loves mountain can do this uh, you are doing great i think uh, I, I, as i talked to you earlier before the session i think we need to talk after your your video sessions probably can do some similar work later definitely on. definitely who one of my most favorite place one of my most favorite time 
Okay, so this is uh, Pangong So 2015, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, I think now I, almost everybody in India knows about Pangong So. Thanks to all the you know interesting stuff happening in that region, and this is quite close to what you guys are hearing in news about finger, finger four, finger five, finger six. Forget about all the fingers. This is the fist. The Pangong So is the the fist. And my most favorite place, enter. I love to, you know, click the pictures around this. You know, a couple of reasons. One, the the ambience is absolutely fantastic. Two, there's nobody. The whole lake is yours. You decide what do you want to do. Three, you add a couple of wildlife into it, and this is absolutely amazing. And the last reason is the the place itself. I mean, it Pango is a salt water lake, and it freezes. That that's a big, and you are standing at an altitude of four thousand meters at the temperature of minus roughly twenty twenty five. Trying to click a picture, you kind of feel like you have an achievement. Whatever you click at the end of the day is one thing, but just completing that whole assignment itself is achievement. So yeah, I uh, clicked a lot of pictures um, of this place in winter, summer, and um, I think I'll be doing hopefully next year, twenty twenty one. I plan to spend. Almost two to three weeks uh, of winter. So my next winter plan is roughly a month in the winter and roughly a month in the winter. Let's see how does it work out. Now oh, that must be amazing. <laughs> great, great. Yeah, hopefully. So how challenging it is to drive? So you take your own vehicle to these places, or do you take a, a local driver with you? Uh, for Ladakh winter, yeah, you have to. You know, rely on the little taxis because you can't drive. Most of the passes gets closed. Um, but I think my the the blessing is for me the taxi drivers in Ladakh are not taxi drivers. They are partners. I mean, if they are not there, you won't achieve anything. So I I you know I have a friend uh, from from Angdui. He is from a place a beautiful village called Nurla. Nurla is a is a beautiful village on the way from Leh to Kashmir. I think I am attached to this guy for almost twelve years now. I got his taxi in twelve years back, and since then, if he is free, I am going. If he is not free, I am not going. So winter is definitely you know I have to drive uh, to you know fly in and then hire a taxi. Other than that, I prefer to you know drive my vehicle because then I can carry a lot of gears with me. i don't have you know a restriction of getting into a hotel or timeline generally like i can park and pitch up a tent if i like the place i if i know the sunrise will be beautiful at this place i would just you know park my car cook my food pitch up a tent set up a tripod and camera for the morning and i am set i am happy i i by god i can cook some good food so <laughs> that way i am quite liberal in terms of what i can say Great, great, great. But I think Spiti, most of the time, I mean, when you go, you drive yourself. It's all your own. Yes, trip, right? always, yes. always, always, absolutely always. Great, 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 amazing. Wow. Okay, that's again Pangso uh, Lake. Uh, this was clicked uh, from a village called Mirak. Mirak um, is actually. What a remote edge! Uh, at that, there used to be no phone connection. I think now they have a BSNL working in Mirak village. And then uh, my friend's homestay is next to, you know, the lake. So I think a lot of you already know. But uh, when you travel along the shores of uh, Pangso Lake, you mostly like for thirty kilometers, you're driving next lake. You keep driving next to the lake. True. Okay? True. Of course, for for winter scenario changes because then you have to cross a lot frozen uh, your water body because water comes on the road and then it frozen it freezes completely and then you you know start driving uh, over the lake. But uh, yeah, I, as I was telling you, you add little bit of light to it and this is something I saw. 
so i have plenty of other pictures of these you know horses these are low horses uh, wild horses and this is one picture i have a picture of the same frame with almost eight horses going in the you know in a in a queue that remains in in of me all the time in my table awesome awesome great do we have a question uh, sort of yeah you want to take it now or we should for the end okay we'll we'll take the questions after some time so i, I don't want to break your flow sure. the way that we are going so we'll definitely take absolutely all, all your tears yeah so yeah so all please tell us a little bit about uh, this picture okay this was another fantastic you know place uttarakhand is the place basically is uttarakhand uh, i recently posted a story on uh, on uh, this particular incident uh, in uh, it was a family drive uh, 2017 16 or 17 i don't remember the year exactly it was a family drive we generally do a lot of family drives during winter and uh, the agenda is very clear we find a time when it's it's a snowstorm time and we want the snow we want the heaviest possible snow because uh, that's the most beautiful time when it snows like anything and this is when it was uh, we planned this trip based on the weather forecast and weather for forecasting 95% chances of snowfall heavy snow but we managed to reach uh, a place uh, called um, uh, diorya so basically the idea was we'll we'll do a track with my daughter and my wife diorya tal camp there click the picture of uh, you know mountains there in the sun and sunrise time and then we wanted to drive up to place called chokta uh, yes, and then we track to tungna yeah 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 so in devratayal you get a very nice reflection in the in the lake yeah absolutely fine happy fine chokumba chokumba peaks i think they yes. they the, if i'm if i'm correct if i'm not wrong uh, chokumba peaks yes. are absolutely beautiful right 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 okay so you can see that and winter is the time when you should visit uttarakhand if you love to capture the mountain peaks snow capped mountain peaks if you love to capture the you know sunrise over the snow capped mountain peaks winter is the most beautiful time i know the photography is the tough the changing i but i think you get into it as with time so i'm not really you know resistant to cold i i feel a lot of cold i i am not very good at cold but i think somehow spending so much years in the cold it somehow it's all about the psyche of just get out of it and start doing photography so this is we got stuck in uh, we could not reach up we got stuck okay. in a place called uh, baniyakond baniyakond is roughly 3 kilometers or probably 5 kilometers before chopta and then it started seeing so much that we could not drive any further and i was driving a two wheel drive vehicle at that time i didn't had any see i have a four wheel drive with snow chains and i think at that time i had no uh, four wheel drive vehicle so yeah then we stayed uh, you know there for a i think two nights and then beautiful next morning the sun came out beautifully and it was fantastic so it was a fun a fun moment with the family and i thought let's get some pictures as well great so uh, what kind of uh, preparation do you do i mean what kind of uh, gear clothes do you wear in places like that so um <coughs> if i am if i am alone uh, all by my by my own generally i i plan extremes so if i am going with a family i don't plan extreme areas generally i stay nearby i know i have accommodations and, and something like that but if i am going let's assume i am doing a photography project or the inventor uh my most important thing like you know prepare for is my clothing everything else comes after photographs camera everything else if you are if you are comfortable if you are not feeling cold if you are if you are secure safe and warm you can click the best pictures possible so first defense is get make sure you are warm make sure you are safe so i generally even layer i don't I, so i hate to wear big thick jacket because then you your movement gets restricted you can't get the you know the angles i want for the the the, the frames or the compositions i generally wear a layer so i wear a inner layer of uh, merino wool and then i wear a 
fleece on top of it and i have a regular jacket on top of it you don't need like costly down feather jackets all you need is good three or four layers on top and couple of layers on bottom and that's all you can handle you know any temperature if you have layers on your body. and that's my philosophy uh, same is for your top same is for your bottom same for your you know feet you wear two layer of socks so i wear like a nylon socks inside and a thick wool socks outside i generally ca- keep uh, one number one bigger size number of my shoes for winter and again a basic shoe basic trekking shoe you don't need 10000 500 rupees shoes basic um, i won't say a brand name but any big store will have a basic uh, you know thing shoe which covers your ankle uh, safely and that's what my you know first uh, you know first level of packing if i am not prepared for that nothing else will work well and rest is like you know keeping the food enough food with me like summer is not an issue in mountains you find a lot of food and everything but then for winters if i am driving my own vehicle i carry a lot of sleeping bag because there are chances of getting stuck you might have sleeping in your car so i keep you know couple of uh, big, big thick sleeping bags with me and i you know carry a quilt with me that's the benefit of driving your own vehicle um and i carry a stove cooking some and i i have a hobby of cooking food so yeah fortunately i carry a pressure cooker and couple of lentils and you know rice with me and i prefer to cook fresh when i am taking the pictures so yeah these are some of the stuff that i carry nothing fancy just a basic survival enough to survive make you survive for few great so how about uh, uh, your camera and gear so how do you make sure that uh, your camera is uh, i mean up and working <coughs> all the time even in the coldest of the temperatures how do you manage that Uh, um i'll be honest with you i haven't done anything drastic to save my camera i would say icons d800 and d810 is quite a quite a rugged you know bodies and lenses are quite rugged winter uh, yes if you shoot a lot in winter time you will start losing the rubber parts of like i think in in all my bodies i'd have the you know rubber grip i have lost that ready and i have decided i am not to get it repaired because next winter trip i am lose the rubber grip because in winter rubber you know gets harder and it loses its glue you will actually lose so i have i have I probably i'll share in some other place i have 3d printed a grip of my own so i 3d printing grip which is saves my hand gives me a better grip for my d80 and the only thing i do when i am you know moving from a colder place to a warmer place i carry a zip lock back with me the only time which is the most dangerous time so if you are moving from a colder place let's say shooting outside in the in the evening time and then you are getting inside the room or the kitchen all of a sudden you will have the condensation on your lenses on your you know body probably a lot of time inside your you know uh, lenses as well that happens right that's actually a dangerous thing for two thing one it can actually cause the, the you know the trigger of fungus inside your body because then the the water remains inside so all i do is when i'm there are two things i do one is if i have ziploc bag just put body and everything in a big ziploc bag move it you know safely and let it be inside the ziploc bag for some time if you go to a ziploc bag i find a transition place which is like temperature in between the outside and inside and i keep the camera for example what i do is in my spiti home stay if i am getting inside the kitchen i don't take the camera in the kitchen i leave the camera in the way so walk is at a temperature between the outside temperature and the kitchen temperature so i just leave it there let the you know camera and the body and everything gets into the temperature zone which is safe and then i covid that's all i do i think i haven't anything very specific to save my gear from winter other than this okay okay great wow another uh, very very <coughs> sort of yours very interesting <laughs> yeah i think this is in spiti winter uh, you get a lot of these you know water uh, so 
you in Spiti, you will see a lot of water streams, which are natural streams or spring streams, which keep flowing on the side of the mountains or the roads. And those are like absolutely pure water streams. You can drink straight out of it. All you need to know is there is no, you know, village on top of it. That's all you need to take care of. And then other than that, all these water streams. But in winter, all these streams freezes and makes some beautiful icicles. And this was a very narrow bicycle. I had to literally crawl behind it. I have a behind the scene shot taken by a friend of mine. So I was literally crawling and was very close to these icicles. But this photo is taken from a fisheye. And I did the distortion correct later on. So this one, it looks so wide and so, you know, far from my camera is because it's a fisheye. But practically on a location, I was like, uh, probably half a feet away from the icicles. Beautiful. I like the way you have composed it. I can imagine you must be crawling through uh, behind this and then taking the picture. Amazing. Yeah, the idea was to bring them uh, uh, for this. Yeah, we good. good. We are good. We go next. Oh, another beautiful place. Uh, this is this is a place. It's called. Uh, it's in a Kenya region. Um, one of my most beautiful places should be around April time because you can see the flowering happening on apricot or apple. Pink flowers are coming out. So okay. Must which be place, around April. Place, yeah, it's an April time frame. Okay. Uh, and yeah, your voice is breaking a little bit. So, which place is this? Okay. So. Uh, this this place uh, this place is a place called Batseri. Batseri. Oh, Batseri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Before and, it's cool. Um, Before it's cool. Sorry. Before it's cool. Yeah, I mean probably seventeen kilometers from Chitkul. Right, right. And Batseri is actually you know it's a very beautiful village mm. from multiple regions. One is its location. It's kind of a bowl. You are right in the middle of all the the peaks, and it's a bowl, and you are sitting right in the center of it. It had a very you know important religious uh, you know factor involved in it. There is a beautiful temple called Black Temple. Uh, great ruins, great tree. Anybody who is interested into architecture, anybody who is interested into mythology or religion. Should come visit this place uh, and uh, you know stay here for a couple of days to walk around. You will see a lot of you know small small temples around it. Mm -hmm. And I when I and then you have to walk to the temple and I see this old building. Probably this building was a uh, house uh, in early time. Jai Shri Nimshal and the old house constructed you know great strategy. The, the the ground floor is always, you know, doubt for the animals. And uh, top floor, uh, probably Rajiji, uh, yeah. first floor, second floor is for the, you know, owner. Okay, Rajiji, your voice is breaking yeah. a little bit. So, is there any other streaming activity? I mean, the, maybe the bandwidth is a problem, not the speaker. Uh, bandwidth, let me see. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I have something on my... Yeah. Let me Let me close a lot of stuff. See if I can... Make it better. Yeah, I think it got better uh, now, little better now. Yeah, I just shut down my other desktop. Okay. 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 Yeah. Must be eating it. Yeah. Is it better now? I'll yeah, be speaking much, slower than as well. Much better. Much better. Yeah. yeah please tell me. Oh, okay. You're saying, you're saying so, about the village. Yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, anybody who's watching this video will be watching this video in in the future. Uh, must visit this place because it has got a lot of relevant things mm -hmm. from the photography or from the from the video blogging perspective, from the story writing perspective. You will see a lot of beautiful architecture um, uh, which you can capture from your camera, from your pen, from your you know videos. And uh, April is a beautiful time because the valley becomes completely pink. That's when I love to go to Kinnar. Either in April, because the valley becomes completely pink because of the you know apricot and uh, apple flowering, or you go to a time frame which is sometime near September, and then you get to see the pink uh, you know farms of uh, 
दे कॉल ओखा और ओखड़ा इज अ काइंड ऑफ अ वीट और काइंड ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर दैट यू ईट एज एज अ वीट एंड द फ्लावर इज कम्प्लीटली पिंक द होल वैली गेट्स कम्प्लीटली पिंक बट या आई थिंक and the the pillars gave me some lovely perspective from my view i know everybody every photographer looks at differently but from my view i wanted to create a lines and the pillars half frame is what my thought was while i was clicking this picture beautiful beautiful absolutely so uh, now suppose you go to a place like uh, batseri so uh, how do you go about approach the villagers and uh, interact with them so please tell us give uh, give us little bit of tips on uh, how you interact with the people the 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 only and the best way to in, you know gel with the locals is spend time with them i'll be honest with you there is no shortcut there is absolutely no the mountain people are the most beautiful most friendly people in the world but they get scared of the people coming from outside they have their own you know comfort zone and if you give them their comfort zone if you if you ensure that their comfort zone is safe they will accept you with the with all the happiness and all the smiles but there is no shortcut to it you just can't visit there for an hour and then get friendly with them you have to spend time with them that's what all photography is all about a videography is all about i would say if you are going out as a tourist just to see the place probably it's fine with you not to gel with the people you can simply you know visit the places look at the views enjoy the mountains cloud fine with you but as a photographer or as a videographer you have to sit with them you have to spend time with them you have to live with them before you start making them comfortable true not just with the mountain i think i think it's true with with any any village in any part of the world or india or down south it's just that you spend time with them give them some more time you know to know you better you know them better they know you better and well yes the speciality of mountain is once they know you better they would do anything for you absolutely i fully agree with you i have yeah. had also some similar experiences absolutely you have traveled sort of in mountain so much so you know it absolutely. you you don't there is no shortcut to win the hearts you sit with them you just give them their you know space and you have world with you once you once they know you are safe person with they them. become a part of the family there are so many families which you visit and they would not let us go uh, without absolutely because, uh, they would absolutely i totally agree with you absolutely beautiful wow so oh, that's the deriya tal we talked about earlier remember right right right, right, right. yeah yeah so well of course uh, i clicked it in a very short is because i was with my daughter at that time and my daughter was quite small i think she was 8 uh, years at that time and needed a lot of attention she runs in the the mountains like anything so you have to run behind her all the time making sure that she doesn't fall on the river or the village or the mountains but yes this was morning time uh, you can see beautiful chakumba chakumba peak uh, yeah while i missed the so i i would love to go back and capture the first light i think i do have one picture probably i'll, I'll send you some other time but but i definitely missed the first light falling over the peaks but i still captured the golden hours a bit i feel and then um, i want so the problem with the mountains and the reflection in the lake or the puddle is that most of the time the the upper portion and the lower portion is mostly negative there is nothing much into it unless you have a clouds into it definitely clouds give you in this frame there was not much cloud on the top part or the bottom part so i thought probably i'll add some of the leaves and trees so i went behind a tree side taking the the lower portion of the leaves just to add little bit of flavor Brilliant. so that you don't have much yeah. negative space right right beautiful i remember going to this place in 2003 i was in college those days amazing so oh, it's a beautiful place trust me place. everybody should visit and a very easy track i think an hour track and then the lake duratal is so stunning so beautiful you get some lovely camps there just enjoy the nature no structure no cement structure only tents beautiful. you are right in the middle of the nature the chakumba peak go in the summer or go in the winter this place is beautiful absolutely beautiful oh fantastic this was 
this was one of my ladakh winter uh, project <coughs> uh, i'll i'll take couple of time on this picture because more than the image there is a interesting facts about this yeah please okay. please tell us about this um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay so this is a place called chumathang chumathang um, is a small town of course chumathang is not just a town chumathang is a region okay but then there is a small village we also call it chumathang village okay and it is very famous for uh, hot water sulfur springs you go in the winter or summer you get to see the boiling hot water coming out of the you know mother earth right um, and despite all that heat um this river freezes this is the um, i remember this is the indus river okay so this river indus river freezes completely while the top portion is rock solid you can walk over it the bottom portion is completely hot boiling you can so i'll i'll be it's a very funny thing i i remember in all my ladakh winter trips if it is 7 days 10 days 11 days uh, i feel embarrassed to say that but i don't take a bath Okay, it's very it's a challenge to take a bath in those you know ten yeah, eleven days. Yeah. But <laughs> Chumathang is one place you will have a hot shower, unlimited water supply. Just swing the shower, the water comes straight out of the sulphur spring, and you will literally regret to come out of that hot shower because you do you will freeze. But this is the only place. There is a very beautiful homestay. run by a lady called padma anybody who is interested should go there padma guest house is the name of the place very homely place runs a small restaurant gives you lovely food try to eat the ladakhi bread or the momos or you know try to get the local jam you will love that instead of eating parathas and all that i i tell people eat local food more than the you know regular plain stuff and one of my friend was there and i wanted so i want to capture this image again while i can appreciate the the harshness of the you know place where you can see the ice has frozen and then broken it so the way it works is that when there is the flow of the water is low the top freezes completely and then all of a sudden the flow in the river increases it breaks the ice and the ice you know cracks like a you know top of the muffin wow and it becomes small small muffins you must go to this place or and these are all those ice parts if i i, I have never been to iceland but i have seen something similar uh, in in iceland and if you want to experience those ice you know chunk of ice lying around uh, in near the river you can actually replicate the iceland here our local indian iceland i would say and then i, I requested my friend to you know sit and give a little bit of red color she was wearing a red jacket and i liked the red color in all the so and, I, and then yeah all this this are all just you know fell in place i would say amazing amazing very good so more than the pictures i mean uh, the picture itself uh, so beautiful and then hearing those stories from you that is what i'm really <coughs> enjoying yeah yeah in fact you know to be very honest with you every time in mountain every picture is a story there is a story behind it until unless you are just clicking the shutter button and then deciding what which picture i will take i i have done that myself i'll i'll be honest i'll be uh, i'll be absolutely honest i've done that myself click thousand of pictures go back home and decide which picture i want to keep which picture i want to delete but gradually i think in last um, you know 8 to 10 years i've learned to you know visualize the frame i want sit there and then just click one single picture as simple as that i am not going to delete it right and this has hasn't happened like uh, i was born to do this i did all my mistakes i went through all the you know sort of you understand all my photographer friend understand you go through this cycle so this place Absolutely. is again pangong so hmm. yeah this place is pangong so again i wanted some human element so this was not frozen so generally pangong so freezes by january february you see it freeze, you know frozen but unfortunately or fortunately or not so unfortunate i would say everything is like a frame so only the edges were frozen and it gave a lovely flavor to it so you you have a place which is completely frozen mm. then you have a blue pangong so river and then you have mountain all i wanted was a friend of mine to sit there i i wished he had no camera in the hand i forgot 
but nonetheless the human element is always beautiful when you mix it with the mother nature absolutely absolutely great okay this is again from that same batseri village uh i would not describe the emotions because i have little bit of affinity with the the elders i i you know i lost my mom just last year december and i was she was the closest person and she was my inspiration to get into all this photography and travel so but then i have an affinity with the elders i generally don't click much of their pictures because uh, i mean it's i don't know the reason for it but i just don't know click more pictures for elders but this is one exception where the everything was so well said the the lady was watching through i think she was watching a young guy you know jumping around and there was a in the backdrop i found these lovely apricot uh, flowers i love this background and i could so split beautiful. the yeah beautiful yeah i could split the whole frame into one third of for the building and the rest two third for the tree and the you know the flowers beautiful beautiful so uh, i i actually have a little different uh, opinion about uh, so with old people i i just treat them like i would treat <laughs> with my uh, granny my, like my grandmother i would do- go talk to them and uh, and just behave as if uh, they are my grandmother and and become very close to them so i agree uh, i agree so i agree in the process i i understand i, I understand you you are absolutely right sarab yeah. the other the other tip i want to give to probably to you and the other audience is the elders in the mountains are the master of knowledge right Absolutely. i learned everything in spiti and pin valley not by the young people by by sitting with the elder people and you sit with them you get to know a lot of things a lot of things which we i think in mountain also start, have stopped doing it so i remember a story and i was sitting in spiti and uh, in winters we generally most of the time we are eating eating and eating watching tv eating watching tv eating nothing else to do and that day we wanted to cook uh, dim sum or momos and mostly we cook them in a regular you know momos ka jo banane wala pot hota hai we cook them in those pots and then there is an elder guy he is a lama there as well he came in the home and said what are you cooking he said we are cooking momos today and he said will you cook we said we'll cook in the regular steamers the regular aluminum steamer and all the no he said this is not the right way of cooking momos i said what this is what we do said, no we generally used to and like 70 years back he said we used to boil momos I said fine interesting how do you boil then he went into the store room and he bought a kind of a pot which was made out of stone right and i and he said this is how we used to cook momos we used to boil the water in this stone uh, you know Uh, jar and then just straight forward drop the you know dumplings into it and boil it that's what the you know the plethora of knowledge these brains have it's just that photography part i'm a little hesitant i can click kids i can click you know younger young people <laughs> probably you know every photographer have a little hesitant hesitation on something probably this is my hesitation right kalpa yeah kalpa first the beautiful kalpa you can see the chini village and the kinnar kalash range well this is uh, this is the beautiful view you get to see so i think again april because again you can see the flowering of apple and apricot is happening the snow is on the peaks uh, perfect setting for the april month <coughs> the green becomes more green the pink becomes more pink white remains there the the clouds the the beauty of this place is the clouds lower than you you are higher than clouds and the clouds keep moving in the few okay um, the village that you see on the lower left side is called chini village very interesting village a lot of you know mythological uh, information there only place where you have the monastery and the temple together in right, right. one place mm. and this is where the you will you will stop seeing the temple so if you are doing a circuit of uh, shimla you know kinnar and then spiti this is the end of temples from here on you start seeing more of the monasteries than temples so i would say this is a transition from where 
uh, you know the you don't see much of a temple you see more of a monasteries as you go towards nako right, or right. all these villages right 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 absolutely absolutely beautiful this is such a beautiful picture Amazing. this place is beautiful trust me you can stay there for you know hours and hours and hours true and true. this place will change in the morning i remember i clicked picture of the same place in the morning time and this was published in national geographics and it was a simple black and white picture of the sun rays coming out of the mountain it was a morning time at 5:30 in the morning and the sun rays were coming out i thought it's a pretty simple photograph i loved it i published it in the national geographics and the author there said i think this is one of the most beautiful and i said right i need to learn a lot <laughs> this was a beautiful time so this place is something you can actually sit there you know the whole day and you will find different concept different you know content different you know colors every every hour it changes on its own right beautiful wow wow well, another another one of my most beautiful place uh, this is uh, this is this place is in kashmir uh, the place is called anantnag um, this this was uh, 2013 we were doing a winter drive and we got stuck in a snowstorm so i remember we were at pahalgaon and uh, i was taking some so and it was snowing and we knew the weather forecast that uh, there was a snowfall predicted for next 3 4 days and we were fine we were we had a plenty of time in our hand so i was in pahalgaon i was with family and they were enjoying and i went out to click some pictures because i i, I saw some of the uh, bakarwals shepherds going walking with their horses so he gave me some wonderful frame i'm clicking it and all of a sudden i saw the hotel guy who is a good friend of mine <coughs> who came and walked to me and said raji you need to leave i said what happened so no you need to leave because i just got heard that the snowfall is getting severe and there is a snowstorm coming up i said okay fine we'll leave no problem from pahalgaon to anantnag it takes roughly hours max 3 hours of drive it took us 7 hours to reach pahalgaon i think i my car skidded couple of times and we reach anantnag and i called up a friend in uh, administration he was a good friend of mine and he arranged uh, a guest house for us in anantnag and we were here on 31st of december so this was okay now i remember it this is very very important date because this was 31st of december 2014 we enjoyed or celebrated our new year eve covered under snow i remember my car was completely covered with snow okay but okay. the only blessing was this this homestay was completely loaded with the food and tea and milk because they were expecting some guest which got answer and we had the chief all uh, lovely you know nice food and all the kashmiri hospitality so we stayed here for 3 days to we waited for the snow to get clear so that we can drive and then um, yeah this was the premises all covered in snow and all i could do was walk and click and walk and click and walk and click best thing you can do when it snows excellent so uh, i am safely assuming that you have taken some of the best pictures in some of the worst situation which we probably yeah i <laughs> i would say absolutely correct i have clicked my best pictures on some of the worst times when i am stuck when i am literally worried that's when i click the best picture because then i is bothered about the technicalities and i am more bothered about the you know the the views and that's it amazing so i don't have time to capture the your picture set up the tripod and everything right. all i could was i received the team he said sir chai pee lo thanda ho ja <laughs> and i said yes yes sir ek second do the photo kheech leta hu as i click the picture and i had the tea so yeah so spontaneity thing works well right right excellent wow beautiful okay this was um, this was in the place called somriri uh, you know sarab but for the audience who don't know somriri is a beautiful lake in ladakh and this was full moon time so it's a single single uh, you know shot no composition no stacking nothing it was taken from 7200 mm-hmm. and i think i added a teleconverter 1.4 x teleconverter i added and i i just wanted to capture the whole moon and the peak and i wanted to capture the lake as well as no uh, as well then i had to take everything so i thought i'll take the moon 
the as well as a clear 7 7 piece sunset sun would be set but on the orange hue on the sky and that actually added this lovely orange color around the moon um this and i spent all i think on that trip i was at so muridi for almost 3 days and that's what i wanted in all these lakes i think sort of this is what you should do probably i'll also plan to do again for ladakh is i want to do a photography trip just for the lakes you know camp next to the lake right. and there are hundreds of lakes in ladakh and kashmir right and i want to spend maybe one or two days next to some of the you know i can't i don't think i can do all the lakes but some of the lakes sit there for a day or capture all the you know hues the shades and the colors and the you know moods of the lake and and the ambience around it absolutely let's do it sometime together i would love to any time sir let's let the thing settle i'm 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 already restless uh, i've done all the preparation and everything is just that i'll make sure everything gets right and then everybody is safe before you before out right. in the mountains right 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 wow okay this was this is not really winter by uh this is summer june okay so just to you know tell everybody wow. but this place is absolutely my most favorite in the whole ladakh this place is called penzila penzila is the is the high pass as you enter from uh, into zanskar valley zanskar, okay yeah. yeah zanskar valley so uh, this was uh, in with i was with the family on this so if you see the left mod center part you see my daughter in the red dress yes 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 so, <laughs> this is the the penzi uh, and we were lucky to see so much snow but still the clear lake so there are two beautiful lakes on top of the uh, pass uh, it's called statso and langso right it's right. called twin sister lake mm-hmm. right if you step properly you can actually there is a one there's one peak which you can walk up to so if you stand on that peak you can actually capture both the lake in one frame it's possible So I've tried that once. Uh, in a the 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 frame was not that beautiful, mm. but my aim was to see can I capture both the lakes. If you're standing on the at the level of the lake, you won't see both the lakes. No, it, yeah, yeah. I've never been able to capture it together. I've never. Seen. Yeah, together is difficult. But yeah, there is there is a small peak which is you to walk mm. and then you can capture both. This was we could not. So in this trip we could not reach Jhulum because uh, I think the pass was. There was a high thing we we on a time we were heading towards the other part of Ladakh. So, mm. but then we the the whiteness and the blueness and the brownness in the whole view was good enough for everybody. Beautiful, absolutely. Hmm. My most yeah. I I I think I. I keep repeating every time I see a picture is that it's my most beautiful place, <laughs> my most favorite place. Mm-hmm. Well, yes, this is one lake where I spent the longest time just to capture the lake. I think the longest I've stayed. This is, by the way, Chandrakal Lake. Right. Uh, you know, sort of for others, yes, this yes. is a lake which is in the Spiti region. Uh, when you go from Manali side or towards Kaza, you you take a diversion, roughly fourteen kilometers, and then park your car. Walk for the another one kilometer and reach the lake. Beautiful lake, changes color, changes the pattern, changes its its own. You know, its its own view every hour. Morning is different, evening is completely different. Absolutely. And yeah, this is this is like where I I think one I spent a whole week. I used to go up in the evening, night. Uh, basically, my aim was there is another picture. I don't know if I sent you, if I missed you or sent you. I wanted to catch Milky Way reflection in the lake, and yeah, I was I was there for a week. Every I used to in the night, but the wind this, used to send me yeah. back. This is the one. Yeah, right? this one exactly. Yeah. This is the one. So this is the one. This is the one. I I think I I wrote a story about it. I managed to click this picture after three years of attempts because generally it's very difficult to find a window when there is no wind uh, in the lake. If it's windy. you don't get the reflection in the lake or if even if you get the reflection the milky way is not that clear <coughs> so i think this year we managed to get this window of 15 20 minutes where there is absolutely no wind and if you see the light on top of the peaks that's actually moonrise 
So it was a fake time. Yeah. I don't personally yeah. know how difficult it is to capture this picture <laughs> because I've been there so many times and never been able to capture this. Yeah. So I would say, sort of, once you start loving the mountains, na, then you start forgetting the pain. I I won't say it's a philosophy. Gyan nahi baat raho, but I think I'm telling you about it. I initially the mountains and traveling to the mountains used to be a pain. Now right. that pain has become a pleasure. Right. right. Uh, that's my personal feeling. I uh, no gyan, my feeling. Beautiful, beautiful. So, so it's great, uh, Rajiv ji. So we talk for so I mean almost ninety minutes, and uh, yeah, I I don't know how time passed and look enjoying through your pictures and stories. So I think we'll have to. uh stop here and just to quickly go through all the questions that we have and uh, and then sure uh, so it was really nice talking to you okay so yeah so uh, sure sure to... thanks same here so do you conduct uh, workshops so yes rajiv ji does conduct your workshops. voice is breaking uh, apologies uh, your voice is breaking a little probably my side i don't Yeah, I think maybe uh, your network might be better. Better, better now. Sorry, better now. Let Let's continue. Better. Right. So uh, Hemlata is asking, do you conduct uh, photography workshops? So yes, uh, Rajiv ji does a lot of workshops. You please follow him on the social links that I have given just below the description. So you will be able to get his update, or you can reach out to him straight forward. You can just reach out to him. Okay. So sure. Uh, yeah. So please share a few challenges in the hills. So yeah, maybe Rajiv ji, you can just share a few challenges that you faced in the hills. I it depends where are you going. So the biggest challenge of mountain is getting, you know, get making sure you are healthy. Okay. Um, the biggest challenge in mountain is, of course, mountains are beautiful, and everybody wants to click the pictures in mountain, but not your priority when you go into the mountain. The priority is you to make sure that you are healthy. You are eating healthy, and then only you can actually go to the next level. I remember uh, last to last year only itself, I was um, conducting a workshop in um, summer time, right? And there was a lady in the group, which she was very quiet. She was like not talking much. I will be very quick. I will not because I know you have another session, Saurabh. So I asked her what is the problem, and she said she is feeling nauseating. Okay, and I said what is the issue? I said vomiting over there. I am not able to breathe properly. I and generally I carry a lot of medical stuff with me. I carry an oxygen cylinder with me all the time. I carry an oxygen, you know, pulse oximeter with me. So I use a pulse oximeter. I checked his her oxygen concentration, SpO2 level. It was 67. Can you imagine? So oh 67 is a lethal. It's a lethal level. We literally right. had to rush her to hospital. The most you know difficult challenge is to keep yourself healthy. Right. I'm, right. I, and I'll be honest. I'm not a very healthy person. I'm not a very fit person. But I maintain a basic fitness because I know when you are in mountain, you are completely at the mercy of nature right. and the mountain. So keep yourself fit. Rest everything is as same as you do in the photography in the in the plains. Right. Right. Okay. So uh, Hemlata is asking, can you please share uh, some filters in post processing? I filters, filters and- in post processing. Okay, I'll be honest. I I use Lightroom for my post processing. Ninety nine percent of the time, I use Lightroom. I don't use any filter as such. I use physical filters, yes, but I don't use any soft filters. Physical filters, I use uh, you know square filters for my fourteen twenty four. So I use CPA quite a lot, and I use uh, you know uh, big ND. So I use tensor of ND quite a lot. <laughs> for the long exposures during the sunset dusk or dawn if i want to take a long exposure so i use physical filters but i don't use any you know uh, ready made soft filters most of my most of my post processing is pretty simple it's straight forward you know adjust the shadows adjust the highlights change the hue a bit uh, change the you know vibrance and all that that's my saturation and at times i use layer but mostly all that happens in lightroom okay so uh, navin is asking this question uh, uh, if you could ask your friends or followers to to do one thing today to tackle the environmental or social issues what would you ask it's very simple very simple this, this is not a rocket science keep it clean keep the mountains clean take your garbage back as simple as i i feel bad when i see plastic bottles lying around i know a lot of guys who are doing fantastic stuff 
in spiti itself i know couple of organizations who are doing a lot of stuff my philosophy is pretty simple you bring your garbage you take it back keep it clean and that's all environment has its own way of healing but if we damage it more the whole process gets disrupted so just keep it clean my philosophy and i tell this to all my friends and family and my clients who come here is bring if you are bringing plastic you are taking it back and in our small homestay we have stopped giving water bottles completely plastic water bottles we have a ro That's system uh, we give that but no we don't give plastic bottles you can bring your own but then you have to take the plastic back with you right very good very good okay so uh, moni is asking uh, could you repeat the name of the lady photographer and the master of black and white that inspired you Ratika Ramasamy uh, 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 Saurabh ji I will send you the names if you can yeah, post yeah, but yeah, yeah, Ratika yeah, is the name there. Yeah Ratika Ramasamy I'll I'll post the name there okay. She is an inspiration she is the yes. lady you need to follow uh, yes. and then Rudra Sen is another guru I will yes. send you his uh, his yeah. facebook link Yeah please yeah, he is definitely master I will add it to the link description yeah Sure yeah. sure deal I will do description okay okay so what amount we need for a trip to for uh, 10 or 15 days so that, uh, that will yeah. <laughs> okay very subjective question very subjective yeah, very question subjective, actually, depends yeah. on depends on what do you need i know people who have done spiti whole trip 15 days in 5000 rupees right yeah <laughs> depends on what's your comfort zone Absolutely. and what Absolutely. all you want to give up if you are ready to give up the luxury then you can actually you know end up doing this trip quite nicely i won't say cheap here i want to tell everybody there is a perception in spiti that if it's a home stay it's cheap no home stay is not about cheap home stay is all about experience i know a lot of guys come to me and tell me sir home stay karwa do sasta ho jayega and i tell sir home stay to mehanga karwaunga main why because home stay is not about cheaper right, home stay right. is about enjoying that life hmm. you it, I mean, the whole trip can happen in five thousand, fifty thousand, and five lakh. It's all about if you are ready to leave the luxurious life. If you can camp, if you can live in a sleeping bag, basic food, public transport can happen in five to ten thousand rupees easily. One person. Absolutely, and I think uh, India is a country where you can, if you want to, you can travel in very cheap. So I have absolutely probably, yes. Yeah, me and my yes. wife, we have traveled in, taken local transport, stay, stayed in uh, yes. homestays, and had spent hardly anything, and then had such rich experiences. Yeah, as you I, said, I, and that's the best way. I I tell you, being in a five star hotel, you would get you know all the luxury, but you won't get a single percentage of the local culture. Yeah. Sitting in a local homestay, you would right. enjoy. You will come back. I guarantee you that. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Great. So it was uh, absolutely lovely talking to you, Rajiv Ji. I really enjoyed it, and I think uh, even our viewers uh, really enjoyed it so much. And guys, please follow him. So uh, I'm sure uh, you will enjoy his pictures. Uh, his Instagram, Facebook, and his uh, YouTube links are there. You can subscribe to him. Um, amazing work I have seen. So uh, very, very, very inspiring and. and more than a photographer he he works a lot for the social causes there he facilitates he takes his friend there and the doctors there who could uh, do some work there so that's why i'm very very inspired and respect him uh, a lot so so thank you so much rajesh ji for joining us and uh, and i am sure we'll uh, meet very soon after this absolutely saurabh and thank you very much for inviting uh, it was a pleasure to be part of this whole you know journey i am i'm sure you are doing a fantastic job i saw all the videos as i said earlier I think you should continue this. I'm going to refer some of my gurus and my friends who are wonderful photographers. I think you must, you know, follow them. I will personally, you know, refer you there. And I, if you can, if you can lure them into these things, I think a lot of people will get benefit out of it. Yeah, absolutely. So it was absolutely. absolutely. I'm signing off from the session. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Sarav. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.